All right, so chapter two is divided into three parts. Part one is we will learn how to write organic molecules. In part two, we will try to identify different functional groups, the organic functional groups we have. And part three will be conjugation and resonance. All right. So what we'll do now is we'll start with part one, which is the writing organic molecules. All right. So, so here we talk about what are the different ways we can write organic molecules. Okay. So one way you already know, and that is writing all the, let's say you have a carbon hydrogen, right? So let's say if you have one, two, three, four, five, and six carbons. Let's see if I have a six carbon chain, then I can write down all the bonds in the carbon. I mean, the carbon should have four bonds. So each carbon has all the four bonds. So in this case, we show all the bonds, okay, and all the atoms. So we have all the carbons and all the hydrogens, okay, with a bond. All right. <clears throat> all right, and we call it as a Lewis dot structure. Now the problem here, it, it takes a long time to write all these different carbons with all these hydrogens, right? So other way to write it would be just simply write down a CH3. So write down as each carbon as a group, right? So this carbon has CH3 as a group on it, so we write down CH3. Then we have a CH2. Then we have a CH2. Then CH2, CH2, and a CH3. So CH2, CH2, and a... CH3, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can divide it like this. So group of CH3, right? So CH3, one carbon at one time. CH2, 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 and CH3, okay? One way, other way could be writing a CH3, and in parentheses, write down as many CH2s as we have. So we have a CH2 how many times? Five, so one, two, three, four times. And then we have a CH3. So other way could be writing like this. Now, the problem with writing all these structure is the time. And it is likely that you might make a mistake when you write these structures, right? So the best way would be, okay, writing a very, very simple structure like this, let's say. Right? So if I want to write down one, two, three, four, five, six carbon, and this name of this compound is hexane. If I write down hexane, how about if I just write down like this? So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so in this case, what you're looking at is each end is a carbon, right? So each end is carbon, and each corner is a carbon. So each corner is a carbon. So how many carbons we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I number those carbons, I can number it like this. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now in this case, we don't write down carbons and hydrogens, right? So we don't show carbons as a carbon and a hydrogen as a hydrogen. Instead, we assume that each end is a carbon and each corner is a carbon. All right. Now, in this case, you have to make sure that you understand that each carbon should have four bonds. Right. So, if you're looking at carbon one here, right? so that's your carbon one right there. So, this is your one, two, three, four, five, and six. So, if I'm looking at carbon one, then carbon has only one bond. Right. So, carbon has only one bond here. That means the remaining three bonds are hydrogens. Right. If we don't write hydrogens. We assume that since this has only one bond, that means the remaining three are the hydrogen. This carbon has two bonds. That means remaining two are the hydrogens. That's why we have the hydrogens right there. Okay. So in this case, we assume that what's missing is a hydrogen. Okay. So each corner and each end is a carbon, and what's missing here is a hydrogen. Okay. And these are called as skeletal structure. So these are the skeletal structure. And again, the the good thing with this is quickly you can. Uh, you can write this structure very quickly, and there's less likely you can make a mistake. Okay. Now, this is only true for carbon and hydrogen. 
okay? If you have anything other than carbon and hydrogen, then you had to write it up, okay? So we'll, we'll try to do some examples, all right? Uh, let's see how, how it will look like. So let's say if you have a structure like this, all right? So we have CH, CH3, CH3, CH2, CH3, all right? So if you have a structure like this, then we can just write down a carbon chain, right? So we, how many carbons we have? One, two, three, four. So I can write down one, two, three, four carbons, right? So one, two, three, and four. And then, so if I number it like this, one, two, three, four, then that's your one, two, three, and four. And then carbon one has another branch on it, okay? So that's your branch right there. Right. So carbon one has how many bonds? One bond, that means this is a CH3. Three bonds are the, remaining three are the hydrogens, okay? This carbon right here, that's your carbon two, has three bonds. That means what you have here, the, the hidden is the hydrogen. So there's only one hydrogen which is missing. Carbon three has two bonds, that means that it should be CH2. And carbon four has only one bond, that means that should be a CH3. And same is true for this carbon. That's only one bond, that means that should be a CH3, all right? So did you get the idea here? What we're trying to do here is we are trying to assume that each corner is a carbon and each end is a carbon. And what's missing, all the missing bonds are hydrogens, all right? So <clears throat> let, let's try some more examples just to make sure that we get a good hold of it. Because later on, we will be only using this type of structures, okay, in the lecture. Um, so let's say we have a structure like this. Right. So this is hexagon, okay. in this case we have six corners, that means we have six carbons, right? So I can write it down like this, right? so six corners are the six carbons, and each carbon has two bonds, right? that's what you see, two bonds, that means each carbon should also have two hydrogens. So what's left over is hydrogen. Okay, and that's what we assume. All right, so all of these carbons should have two hydrogens each. All right. So let's try another example with, uh, with a double bond. Okay, so let's say when you have a double bond between carbon and carbon, right? <clears throat> so let's say if you have a structure like this, Right? So what it means here that each corner and each end is a carbon, right? So how many carbons we have? One, two, three, and four. So right. So each corner is a carbon. So one, two, three, and four. So I can write down those carbons as one, two. Then there's this double bond. There's a carbon and there's a other carbon, right? So we have one, two, three, and four carbon, right? So starting from left to right, right? So this carbon has only one bond. That means how many hydrogens we have here then? there will be three hydrogens, right? This carbon has three bonds, that means there should be one hydrogen. This carbon is same as this. Three bonds means the leftover is a hydrogen. And this carbon has one bond, that means you should have three hydrogens here, <clears throat> all right? So when it comes to a triple bond, so let's, let's say if you have a carbon and there's a triple bond right here. <clears throat> right. So triple bond, in this case, you don't see a corner, okay? Because if you remember, this carbon is sp carbon and sp carbon shape is linear. So this geometry is linear. So in this case, you don't see the corners, all right? But in this case, you assume that the triple bond is between the two carbons, right? So there's a carbon and a carbon. So we have one, two, and three carbons, right? So we have one, two, and three carbons, right? <clears throat> so this carbon has only one bond. That means there should be three hydrogens on it, right? This carbon has all the four bonds, so there should not be any hydrogen. Okay? And this carbon has three bonds. That means there should be one hydrogen, okay? So at the end, you have to match it to four, 
right? So you have one, that means the three are the hydrogens. Here you already have four, so there should not be any hydrogen. And this carbon has three bonds, that means the leftover is a hydrogen, okay? So this is how you assume that where the hydrogens are, okay? So let's say you have an example where you have an oxygen. So if you have a structure like this, all right. <clears throat> right. So in this case, we have one carbon, two, three, and four. Right. Now, when we have oxygen, anything carbon and hydrogen, other than carbon and hydrogen, we have to write it, like oxygen, nitrogen, halogens. We have to write them the way they are. We don't assume. Okay. We only assume carbons and hydrogens. Okay, when you write the structure. So we have four corners, that means we have four carbons. So this is we have. Right, so carbon one, two, three, and four. So one, two, three, and four. <clears throat> right, so this carbon has only one bond. That means this should have three hydrogens. So that's your carbon one. All right. This carbon already has four bonds attached to it, so there should not be any hydrogen. This carbon has two bonds, that means there should be two hydrogens coming out of this. All right? And carbon four has only one bond, that means there should be three hydrogens attached to it. All right? Let's say if you have an example like this, where you have an oxygen, okay? So in this case, when you have oxygen, then you have to show all the hydrogens <clears throat> attached to the oxygen, okay? So how many corners, how many ends we have? We have one, two, three, and four, okay? So I can write down those four carbons like this. So then there's a double bond, there's a carbon, and there's a OH. All right. If you start from here, this carbon has only one bond, that means this should be a CH3. Okay. This carbon has only one bond, that means the remaining should be three hydrogens. This has four bonds already, so no, no hydrogen on this. This has three bonds, that means there should be one hydrogen. This has two bonds, that, should be, that means there should be two hydrogens. Okay. And OH will stay as OH. All right. So when you have NH2, it will stay the way it is. If you have OH, it will stay the way it is. All right. Or if you have a halogen, let's say, fluorine, chlorine, or bromine, they will stay the way they are. Okay. We don't change those. Okay. The rule is only for carbons and hydrogens. All right.